Every once in a while, you gotta ask yourself, am I completely full of shit? Welcome to another Scott the Truck Driver awesome, not fucking shit up, fucking great podcast and shit. I've been promising a while that I was going to take a look at my old fucking videos and see just how dumb I was back then compared to how dumb I am now. I'm, I'm, a, I'm slightly less dumb now than I was then. And, but I do realize that there are a lot of people out there that are just as dumb as I used to be that somehow aspire to be as stupid as I am now. Or something. So that's what I'm going to do for the first part of this video. For those of you joining me on DLive, stick around after this first video because I will be filming live two more videos for YouTube on two completely different topics, but one of them's kind of related. One of them's a little related. It's a nice transition. But I need to pump out five videos, and I'm going to pump out three of them right here on this live stream tonight. So you can get a preview of the videos to come on YouTube if you're here on DLive. If you're not watching this on YouTube, sorry, but you'll have to wait until those videos get to YouTube because, you know, YouTube takes longer. This is easy. YouTube is hard. So let me zoom in a little here. This comment comes from Ben Steele. There we go. This is from Ben Steele uh, in response to one of my videos uh, talking about fasting. There are many economic factors. Poor people can't afford healthy, nutritious food or health care. I can disagree with that because I'm currently uh, income challenged, uh, living within the minimum wage uh, life, and I will say that it is perfectly possible to eat healthy, and fasting costs absolutely nothing in terms of intermittent fasting. There is no reason to load yourself up with fake foods and calories that are devoid of nutrition, and we'll get to why a little later, but for the most part, being poor is not an excuse for eating poor. There are plenty of economical ways to be keto. Um, I've seen many people over the years who have large families that went keto and they did it through Walmart. You might have to do dirty keto, but dirty keto is still better than fucking standard American bullshit diet keto. So there's that. Beyond basic health problems such as obesity and diabetes, eating a poverty diet will cause malnourishment. Well, that's true, because a lot of the, you know, like the dollar box mac and cheese has fortification in it, but for the most part, you're not getting proper nutrition. And there's a recent story on this that's going to be part of the video I do later. But mainly, you see, I'm keep I'm I'm edging towards that video that I want to make about it, about this subject. It's much harder and less desirable to do fasting when sickly and malnourished. That is true. If you do not have, you know, if you're deficient already in something and you start doing a long fast, you're going to hurt. You're going to hurt a lot. It's going to suck a lot. So... Foo, it's harder, sure, but it's not impossible. Ground beef and eggs are cheap, much cheaper than eating cheap junk. And that is true. And those happen to be two of my go-tos. You know, I can't afford to eat ribeyes every fucking day. I have to eat eggs and, and ground beef. And believe it or not, the high-fat ground beef is cheaper than <laughs> all the other <laughs> shit. the bed. Well, howdy, folks. Thank you, Nucking Futs, for the follow. Appreciate you. So... Caution would be warned, especially about longer fasts, at least the nutrient density helped with the malnourishment. But what if someone is poor and they can't afford nutrient density? There, you can, because first of all, meat and fat are complete, you know, most meats are complete nutrition profiles. Eggs is virtually a fucking superfood. 
and you can get most of your nutrition through meat and fat and you can supplement a little bit with plants a reasonable amount of plants and have a completely balanced nutritional profile as a ketogenic Great diet. American ever so, thank you Dave 101 for the diamond um, so you know, there's there's really no excuse. I've heard all the fucking excuses. I can't do keto because of this. I can't do keto because of that. When bottom lines is you can't do keto because you're addicted to the fucking standard American diet, which is addicting as fuck. They spend hundreds of millions of dollars, the food industry, to research just how to trigger your fucking brain to make you want more, not be satisfied when you eat it, so that you'll keep buying more of their product, which is usually about 10% food and the rest is chemicals and fucking filler. Granted, you'll get your calories in, but you'll probably die at age 55. You know, that that's kind of the trade-off they're making there. You won't starve to death, though. So there's that. In fact, you'll go the other complete other way. You'll likely be obese and malnourished, which is completely possible. So, um, yeah, there is no excuse, none whatsoever. Fu says, I agree, and uh, Dave101 agrees as well. So I just wanted to address that comment because it fits in with what we're about to talk about. And we're going to go back in time. That's right. Back to when I was a complete fucking idiot. But I was starting to learn. And I haven't rewatched this yet. So I don't even remember what the fuck I said. But I do know this is the first video I made about fasting. It was in the truck still. This video is still available on YouTube. It's been watched 6,000 times. Apparently, I did a good job. It hasn't been ratioed. Um, but we're going to go over it today so I can update what I've learned over time. And we're also going to go over two other videos I did, including my most viewed video of all time, which is I lost 46.1 pounds eating junk with intermittent fasting, which sounds really fucking great. And that's why it got clicked on 56,000 fucking times. You know, and it still mystifies me to this day that that many people watch that video. But it, I, I, I understand why they clicked it. Because they want to eat this shit. They want to keep eating the standard American diet. And they don't want to have to work hard to lose the weight. I'm going to have some surprising things to say during this about whether or not you can lose weight with just intermittent fasting. But a lot of you who have been watching a long time fucking know where I stand on this shit. This isn't just a, you know, oh, I can lose weight fucking lifestyle. This is a, oh, I can be healthy and not worry about my weight lifestyle. Even if you are a little bit over that fucking ab fuckable range that everybody thinks is healthy. So, you know, there's that. Uh, wait, wait, I'll get a chocolate bar and chips first. <laughs> you know, the irony is, is I do believe that there are people that watch some of my shit that are sitting there snacking on, you know, standard American chemicals and, and glyphosate and shit. Lots of glyphosate. Glyphosate for the win. So let's get into this. I will be pausing it to react to myself, which is kind of like weird in, in ways I can't even fucking describe. Uh, John Martin, this is going to be good. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I, w I don't even remember what I said. Was I completely an idiot? M am I currently completely an idiot? Because when you do this and you look back in time at videos you made years ago, it makes you wonder, will you be looking back years from now at the current videos and being like, wow, he was a fucking moron, that guy. What the hell? Why did anybody fucking subscribe to his dumb ass? So, uh, oh, you're drinking coffee with organic heavy cream? So am I, even though it's in a chemical fucking container that keeps it warm for long periods of time. I, too, am caffeine-fueled, which is what the vegans will say is the only reason we have energy on this diet. I know I disagree. It's the only reason I don't have a fucking caffeine headache, though. I will say that. So, yeah. <laughs> and the vegans have gotten getting me triggered again. You know, I was trying to leave the vegans alone. But a couple of them came in to poke me in the comments, and then they had some vegan headlines are going. So look forward to some fucking vegan triggered videos. Plus, somebody made me watch Dr. Gregor today. They sent me a link, and I was like, oh, no, it's new fit, nutrition facts. I'm going to hate it. I'm going to hate it with my soul. And sure enough, I hated it with my soul, and he was talking complete nonsense. Anyways, enough about that.
Let, let's let's see how much I suck. Fuck do you think you're doing? You think you're gonna fucking ever stop being a fat fuck? Really? Well, I got some fucking news for you. It ain't that fucking easy, is it? No. Ah. Now, if you was born skinny and you're fucking skinny your whole life, then it's pretty fucking easy for you. But if you've been a fat <laughs> fuck your whole life, like me. Thank you for the follow, Samsung Faka. It is not. I, I, I was still a miserable fuck because I was in the truck during this video. The easiest fucking thing in the world. Here's a secret to fucking losing weight. Put the fucking fork down. Ah, the old music. I actually made this song. It's pretty cool. Let's see, where was I at? The following is my personal experiment in weight loss and fasting. I have a goal of 180 pounds. Never made it. Never made it. I, well, I take that back. I got to 179 during a seven-day fast, and then I shot right back up. Um, I've been hovering in between 190, low 190s and mid to upper 200s, all the way up to 210 at one point, and then back down to the 190s. I'm currently hovering at 195, a nice solid weight. i not trying to lose weight. I do have some fasts, but the fasts that I want to do in the future, particularly some wilderness fasts before it gets fucking cold out, they're going to be for health reasons more than anything else. I want to clean up my messes that I sometimes make because I do incorporate cheat days and there are some ketogenic foods that probably cause me a little bit of problems. A little bit of fasting can help clean some of that up. Not all of it. It's not an end-all be-all, but... You know, I am six foot tall, so you're right, Dave. Uh, 200 is fine for my height. Um, but I, I, I'm I, happy in the 190s. My belly measurement is below half my height. I think last I checked it was 35 inches, which, you know, is one inch below considered healthy for visceral fat. I can see some definition in the ab area, but there's a, definitely a pooch and some loose skin in there, and that tends to bloat quite often if I fuck up. Um, or if I eat vegetables, pretty much, or anything that has fiber in it, I definitely do bloat periodically with. But, you know, it depends on what it is, really, and how much of it I eat. If I eat a salad, I'm almost guaranteed to bloat, especially if it has vegetable oil fucking dressing on it. Just why you don't eat out all the time. Definitely don't eat out all the time. There's all kinds of shit getting snuck into you, even if you're trying to be keto. Thank you for the subscribe, Cole Baby. Appreciate it. All my badasses, I appreciate it. I still have this song, I should bring it back. Welcome to my new vlog series. I'm still going to be doing my other vlog, so if you enjoy my driving and bitching about Canadians and, and, and all that other lovely shit that I do while I'm working. I, I was so angry with Canadians because of the traffic situations I was always in. That vlog will continue. Yeah, However, it's called Loser. I I um, an ex-girlfriend, her... Her daughter did the voiceover for me because I recorded it that that song a long time ago. You know, when I used to fucking date. I don't date anymore. Look like shit, but I just got up from uh, four hours of sleep. And I couldn't fall back asleep because my sleep schedule is all fucked up from work. I don't miss those days. I don't miss those fucking days at all. Now, as you all know from my vlogs, I am in the middle of trying to lose weight. Yeah, I have to actually make money first, Dave. <laughs> um, for those of you... Not, if she wants, like, 1% of my uh, YouTube revenue from this video, it's, like, pennies. Like, I, I, I could literally just hand her the, a cup of change, and that would cover me for 10 years. You who are, haven't been watching my other vlogs, and this is their first time seeing me, I'm going to go through uh, the whole... 
spiel here on what I'm doing. Now, first of all, everything that you hear me say from this point forward is coming from two places. One, the motherfucking internet. I have been reading books. I have been books and shit and watching documentaries. I've been listening to fucking Harvard MIT motherfuckers talk about some of the concepts that I'm looking into trying and telling me what the health benefits are and all of that bullshit. All of the shit that I'm going to tell you, you can find out in more detail. Thanks to the mother. So even back then, I was saying, do your own fucking homework on the motherfucking internet. Fucking internet. Yeah. You know that Google shit? <laughs> Turns out you can find out how to pee. <laughs> or anything else that you want to learn how to do, you can find out. It just takes effort and time. Those are the two things you need. Time. And a lot of people don't invest in that time. And I'm glad I did, because I wouldn't be where I am today had I stopped researching and just followed the formula. If you're a lazy motherfucker, don't even bother. You know? If you uh, don't have a lot of time on your hands, probably not going to be able to, to research a lot of this shit. <laughs> Google is your father, Dave. So, I'm here for those motherfuckers. I'm here for the lazy motherfuckers, because I can be one sometimes. And I'm here for the ones that don't have the time to go out and find this shit out on their own. I'm going to summarize what I've been reading and learning and also tell you my... I don't even remember what the hell I read back then. I, I, I know I listened to a lot of audiobooks by Brad Pilon, who was one of the early fasters I followed. I know I followed Hodge Twins for a little bit because they were the first bodybuilders I came across because I was trying to do eat less, move more to lose weight my fucking experience with it because a lot of people are having the same fucking problem I had so let me go into a little bit of history here on uh, why I'm so into this now all of a sudden a long time ago I was in the Air Force I do take submissions of course royalty free Waldemar um, I have like the the theme that you hear the little piano theme I originally wrote the melody but that was actually redone um, by Wes Derrickson, uh, 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 somebody who's been a long time watcher of my shit, and he offered to redo my original version of that song, and then I, um, I pretty much have been using that for the past couple years now. Uh, I sometimes joke about bringing back my original version of the song, just because it's so fucking quirky and weird, as is my musical talent, my very, very, very limited musical talent but that little piano theme actually goes into a whole metal song that's based off of it and since i've shortened my intros because i used to get bitched at all the time for fucking having like almost a minute montage video with a full fucking thing at the beginning everybody's like i hate your intros i'm just skipping them anyway piece of shit so i brought them down to a more manageable little splash screen and and shit, you know. I figure if anybody wants more than that, they can look in the 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 uh, underneath the video or go to my website and find out more shit instead of just running huge credits. Plus, I got credits on my website now for people that sponsor, and and I might make a like a thank you video to to them every once in a while to kind of go through the names of the people that make this kind of shit possible. So there's that, and. uh I started to pack on some pounds. Now, I've always had a fat gut. I've always had fat right here in my fucking mid. And I still do have a little bit there. It's not as much as I had in that fucking video, but it's a lot. You know, it's the last place body fat has left my body, and it really didn't start showing progress till I quit drinking completely. And it's st that's still a work in progress. I'm wondering what it's going to look like in a year of not drinking. And I'm motivated now to not drink just to see what happens because I've noticed an improvement since I quit drinking. So that was another thing. In this video, I was still drinking every time I was home. Like a fish. I was, I was a big partier back in the day. All the way up till 
you know, about six or seven months ago when I finally quit drinking. And I still party, I just try and do it sober. Head section. My entire fucking life. Yes, I was. Much, much chunkier. The difference is, is when I was 17 years old, I weighed 175 pounds. So I was just squeezing in their little fucking measuring and all that other bullshit. And, uh, and what I'm referencing there is when I was in the military, I became overweight and obese. And it resulted in me never getting promoted because I was overweight. Um, you know, it, and it started to creep up. So even then, I, I was struggling with it. And the military solution was eat less, move more, have more fruits and vegetables, and less shit. The same formula that we've all tried to, to do to lose weight and didn't get there. I mean, we got there, but we didn't get to stay there because A, we were ravenously hungry and miserable. B, if we even looked at a carb, we gain, regained tons of weight. Our metabolism drops, our hunger increases in that situation, and the longer you go trying to maintain your loss that way, the hungrier, hungrier, more miserable, and you know you can permanently lower your metabolism. Well, not permanently, but you can make it very difficult to raise your metabolism at that point if you're constantly in an energy deficit, and it lowers up to a thousand calories, so you could theoretically lose all that weight be ravenous and starving and then eat your maintenance calories and start regaining weight. You know, that's where a lot of plateaus really come from, is that exact thing. Thankfully, you'll hit the wall much sooner than your goal, so you, you know, you'll realize you're fucked up, and then you'll go back to eating and fucking off and getting fat again. I've seen so many people lose so much weight doing it that way. Calories in, calories out, eat less, move more, and then I see them uh, six, eight months later, and the weight's creeping back up. And they're miserable about it, and they're still doing that low calorie diet. And it's not the way. You gotta fix yourself. And at the time I made this video, I didn't fucking know that. I didn't know anything about the metabolism, the, the metabolism being able to ramp up or down, plus or minus a thousand calories, is the, the biggest documented thing I've seen in that corrupt thing we call science. Thank you, Heiser Hines, for the 2D fucking fruity and shit. I appreciate you. 175 is supposed to be my ideal weight today. I haven't seen 175 since I was 17 fucking years old. I'm 39 now. So. And for those keeping score, I'm 43 now. Over the years, the fat continued to pile up. You know, I got a nice set of man tits out of the deal. My arms and legs have always been skinny. I mean, I've never had fat arms and legs. In fact, when I was in high school, I was approached by the goddamn fucking soccer coach because he saw I had fucking muscular fucking legs. The reason I, I had muscular legs is I rode my fucking bike everywhere. Like, I would ride. I still get comments on my calves. To me, they're just normal fucking calves, but I don't know what it is. But lately, I've been wearing shorts out, and people are like, you got some fucking pretty mean calves and shit. You know, it's it's been interesting. Um, I think my calves have shrunk since I've been doing all this weight loss shit. Sorry, I'm struggling with this fucking thing. I need to figure out a new... Maybe I need to get a, one of them fucking head, streaming headsets and mics so I don't have to fuck around with this shit in, as much. But yeah, I still get comments on my calves. When you started your YouTube channel, did you plan that you would start trying to lose weight and document it? No, my channel was originally just a vlog about me being a truck driver and all the bullshit I had to deal with. And it was mainly for me to vent. But I, you know, I occasionally would talk about some things and, and, and stuff like that. And then, you know, I decided, you know, that's when I hit the health wall. I, I almost failed my DOT physical because I was pissing sugar. I was pushing, you know, 256, 257 pounds, somewhere in there. 
and I knew it was just creeping up, and it wasn't going to stop, and so I said, well, I'm going to go fucking lose weight, and then I started watching YouTube videos, and, and studying, like, you know, how to body build, and exercise, and that's where I come across the 500 calorie deficit fucking theory that they like to fucking push on you in the bro science community, and I did all of that for a while, I lost a few pounds doing that, I quit soda, I eventually quit Gatorade, um, but that was later on, during this, I was strictly, I was doing the exercise thing, trying to eat clean, as they tell you, um, which made me fucking ravenously hungry. And I was drinking, uh, I was still drinking Gatorade, um, I wasn't drinking Mountain Dew anymore, and I hadn't quite switched to coffee yet, if I remember right. So, I don't know, maybe I'll go over that in these videos that we're going through, but, let's see. Well, lots of progress, uh, because you started pretty quickly, or pretty quickly early. Yes, I definitely caught this early. Um, it wasn't something I had to... You know, wait till I really hit the wall. And I, that's the problem. A lot of people wait until they're, like, in the doctor's office, prescribe the medication to deal with their problem. Um, if you just see the writing on the wall soon enough, you have a better shot you know, at achieving better health than you did before. Food. So, you know, it, it, it's what you pretty much have to do at that point. Ride to the fucking mall 10 miles. I'm Thank you, Double Delta. For the ice cream my fucking bike you know and I, I just that's how I got around I rode a fucking bike now I fucking drive around in this fucking thing that's my f physiology is I've been packing on weight and the one of the reasons I've been packing on weight is I eat like shit that's right shit I go to fucking McDonald's, fucking Arby's, Five Guys, fucking oh. Five Guys. Oh, that used to be my favorite. It's Five Guys. And he's buffet, Kentucky Fried, motherfucking chicken, Popeyes, motherfucking chicken. If there was any worse diet that you could have in your fucking life, I drink Mountain Dew every day. They all, all of that shit. If you could think of the worst possible shit that you can eat. I've been living off of that shit since I was a fucking teenager. Longer even, than that, since I was a baby. Before that. Even when I was a kid, my mom would give me fucked up shit. She did try and cut my sugar out at one point. Yeah, I uh, still do Five Guys very rarely, though. Like, maybe once every couple months. And I get the burger bowl, which is basically everything you would put on a burger, except the ketchup, of course. In a bowl. And I sat there and eat it with a fork, and then I'm supplement that because you get free peanuts there and I eat that as my fries I don't get the fries obviously um, once in a great while for a cheat day I might do the fries because they are fried in peanut oil which is better than a lot of the vegetable oils out there but you know at the same time it's a rarity for me to even eat out um, just because it's cheaper to just do the ground beef and egg thing and the occasional ribeyes and you know a little bit of cheese and a little bit of uh, low carb tomato sauce here and there and that's pretty much my diet um, and by the way I'm getting my fucking labs coming up I'm going to the doctor Monday for my checkup we're going to find out if I'm fucked or not and I will share the results of course uh, as soon as I get them and we'll find out if I'm a fucking idiot or not you know I, I'm anticipating passing with flying colors though Waldemar, yep, I eat a burger with a fork. No fucking shame there. It's rare for me also. Yep, and it's it's okay to go out and do an occasional cheat day or an occasional eat out on keto day. Um, you just don't want to eat that way every day or even every week, you know. The, the more time you can span between eating unhealthy and even un unhealthy keto as well, the less impact it's going to have on you. You'll recover. We're resilient creatures. We're allowed to get fucked up by something every now and then, and our bodies are designed to endure and replace and re replenish and fix and heal. You know, fasting is definitely another thing that you can use to mitigate damage that's done when you do these things, you know, and I completely 
think that fasting should be part of your regular routine in these situations. Double Delta, I used to go to the original Five Guys years ago. It was about 85 times better. Whole place was about as big as, as a kitchen, no seating. Yeah, it's spread out. I don't I don't remember where it originally was, though. But there was always cakes and pies and all kinds of just fucking... Dave 101, your last abandoned building visit probably gave you something. Yes, the air quality was poor. Uh, I didn't have any adverse reactions that I noticed after that trip. Although it's only been, you know, it's been less than a week since I uh, did that. So we'll see. Um, as for my hives breakout, that's still ongoing. Um, the doctor's probably going to want to give me something to put on it. I'm probably not going to do that unless it, you know, unless it goes a while and still doesn't go away. I'm starting to think it's not even hives, though. I'm starting to think that it was itchy green shit, probably from when I went to Lost Lake, because um, it's only isolated to one area, and it makes sense be <clears throat> because I was wearing a sleeveless shirt that day and it's like right along the arm and shit and down in the like this area and uh, you can tell that when i did this that it translated in between here and here and caused you know which is what like itchy green shit like poison oak poison sumac that kind of stuff will transfer the oil around and it will spread that way but it's only isolated to this area it hasn't spread anywhere else so i'm thinking it's less that it was you know hives for something i ate and more that it was itchy green shit from running around the woods like a fucking moron so that's what i'm thinking uh, happened there it shit she tried to make me eat vegetables and you know i didn't really like fucking vegetables i still am averse to vegetables i'm not a big vegetable fan I don't know. I don't feel like a... F and I agree there. I never was big on vegetables. And now that I know what I know that I didn't know back then is that we don't need shit tons of vegetables. Every once in a while, you can have a vegetable. Just like the vegans that go vegetarian because they're becoming nutritionally deficient. Every once in a while, they'll have fish or maybe an egg or something, you know, uh, just to keep things up. Well, it's the same principle in reverse when you're carnivore slash ketovore. You can have some vegetables every now and then, but you don't want to have a lot of them if you're sensitive. And I'm sensitive. If I eat too many, you know, oxalate-rich vegetables are, are a big thing right now. I know a lot of people battling kidney stones right now. Um, one of whom is a very hardcore, you know, as far as ve junk food vegan probably, but still vegan. Um, and had a bunch of kidney stone issues so you know it's important not to overdo it with the vegetables and especially if you're having autoimmune problems because of the glyphosate problems the industrial agriculture problems I, during this video i didn't know none of that shit i look at you know see that dumbass right there he didn't know shit about this yet i was just starting to grasp the concept of fasting in this video but, you know, I, I still notice I did know a pretty decent amount for the time in my life that I was at. So, um, veg is uh, a cleaner every once in a while. Well, it, I look at vegetables, which do have chemical plant defenses, and glyphosate uh, is a factor in some of them. Um, it, grain's the big one that, to keep in extreme moderation, as in maybe once every couple months with the grain. Um, but uh, for the most part... If you just occasionally have a salad or you occasionally have vegetables, you're not really going to overload with oxalates. You have a certain level of tolerance to these plant defenses that we've built up genetically over time. So you can occasionally insult the system, so to speak. And if anything, it helps build your defenses and tolerances to certain things. Because um, if you take some them out of your life completely and you leave them out, then you're going to be more sensitive to them when you take them in. And I think a lot of carnivores are get in that, you know, position where they've been off vegetables long enough to where if they have any, they're going to show immediate symptoms. Um, and uh, Michaela Peterson, I think, is a good example of that. Because um, every time she tried to reintroduce something, she had even more drastic symptoms than she had prior to that. So... 
you know that's that's the thing you know only thing i can't kick is ghost pepper i still eat hot shit as far as that double delta I'll st i still like you know i have salsa every once in a while with some jalapeno stuff in it and of course hot wings uh you know buffalo wings definitely a cheat day keto cheat day it's dirty keto but because it's usually fried in fucking vegetable oil and then the buffalo sauce you don't even know if they're using butter like they're supposed to but you know they're fucking delicious and i like to have a, a occasionally some buffalo wings it's dirty keto i do get bloated every time i do it so there's that and plus uh, our industrial farming practices aren't taking very good care of those chickens that we uh, eat so that's a thing too about the only plant foods that don't cause me problems are tea coffee mushrooms um, if I have a salad, I feel it for a couple days. You wouldn't I'm, be fucking with me now, would thank you? Thank you, uh, Triple X Rider. Um, I, uh, I think I'm gonna get me some thank you again, Triple X Rider. I, I have that same thing. Like, there's some vegetables I seem to be sensitive to, and I think it's always been that way, but because, as I just said in that video, I don't constantly... I didn't constantly eat vegetables. In fact, I probably am better off because I didn't. Um, because that would have poked all kinds of holes in, in my system. And I wasn't deficient. That's the, that's the irony. I was on the standard American diet. Now, granted, a lot of the, like, breads and that, those kinds of foods are regulated to be supplemented with the nutrition you need. Um, but I have a feeling it's not as good as getting the nutrition from its natural sources, we can talk about that a little bit since vegans like to do this supplement shit to survive. But, uh, you know, I didn't, the only vitamin deficiency I had uh, back then was vitamin D, which meant I didn't, I was sedentary inside a lot, not seeing the sun much. Yeah, I'll be, I might be vitamin D deficient again, though I did get out doors, you know, be, by going on this last trip. And I am planning a wilderness fast, probably in a week or so. I'm going to go out in the Adirondacks, spend three days-ish, and uh, come back and probably lose a few pounds in that process and clean up myself a bit and get some of that glyphosate out of myself, hopefully, maybe. Or I want to go out and kill something to fucking eat it. So I've been eating like shit my whole life. Uh, subscribed. What, what's that? We subscribed. As I get to, are you, you subscribed here? Uh, Dave, I thought you were already a badass, Dave. Or if you're talking about subscribing on DLive. Um, there's three different places to subscribe. You can subscribe here on DLive. You can subscribe on scottthetruckdriver.com, which you get the emails for. And uh, you can also subscribe on YouTube. So there's that. Uh, the definition word doesn't even make sense. Let's see. I must. I must have missed something. Um, did I miss something? What's with all the badass badge tags? Yeah, that's what. Uh, that's for subscribing. Okay, I missed the question there. Yes, when you subscribe, you get a badass tag on your uh, um, name, and there's a little subscribe button at the top over over there somewhere and shit so i don't get to see it because obviously i can't subscribe to myself the weight just keeps on creeping up now around january february of 2014 this current year i said i am getting fucking huge i mean True I've story. Never been true, true story. I was at 255 fat motherfucking pounds. You know, didn't exercise for shit. And I'm a truck driver. And I'm thinking, this is a turning point in my life. If you look at a lot of 40 and 50 year old truck drivers out there, they can't see their dick. <laughs> They're fat pieces of shit. They are. And I don't want to be like that. Hey, nothing against fat fucks, okay? Like I said, I've been one, and I'm still one today. But, I'm looking at that, and I'm like, do I really want to go through all that fucking pain and suffering as I get older? Because, I mean, there's this one guy that works for the fucking company I work for, 
He is morbidly fat. And he is the laziest motherfucker I've ever seen. He will park his truck literally next to the fucking door of a fucking gas station so he doesn't have to walk. I mean, are you fucking kidding me? You can't walk. That's why you're fat. That's why you're huge. Is you don't take... And I didn't know back then about, you know, just, just displaying a little bit of my ignorance in this. Um, about metabolism, about the fact that when you are obese, you are essentially starving because the energy is no longer getting to the cells that need it, like the cells that are needed for you to get your fat ass and walk, um, because your fat cells, the insulin sensitivity has risen and your regular cells have their insulin sensitivity reduced as in insulin resistance so therefore all the glucose that's coming in is getting converted to fat and that fat is going right past your cells the glucose is getting stored because the, it can't get into your cells and it's going right into the fat cells and i also didn't know at the time about the genetics of it uh, you are genetically, you have a limit on how many fat cells that you're, you're able to produce. In actuality, if you're able to become morbidly obese, you are more protected from certain health conditions than a skinny motherfucker that's going through the same diet. As in, you'll store a bunch of fat before it starts to spill out into your organs. But you'll still hit that wall at some point and it will spill out into your organs. 20% of obese individuals are metabolically healthy for this reason because they haven't spilled out into their organs. Visceral fat is what kills us. It's, and fat in our arteries is what kills us. And because we are driven hormonally, our hormones are all out of whack, our brain's telling us we're hungry, even though we're eating fucking a whole pizza from Domino's and, you know, all the fat fries that fucking Five Guys pours into the bag, you know, and drinking all the Mountain Dew. We're still hungry two hours later, like clockwork. Doesn't matter how many fucking calories you took in on that last meal. If you're fat, you're hungry again in three hours without fail. So you got the hormones working against you. You got the energy passing the cells that are screaming for, for energy and going into your fat cells so you're tired, hence lazy. Your appetite is up. You're hungry, lazy and hungry. And it's really biologically by that point, at the point of obesity and morbid obesity, it's completely out of your mental control. There's no way you're going to willpower, out willpower that shit. The only willpower you have is to change what you stuff in your face. And if you start stuffing keto in your face, you'll get full longer. Your hormones will start to change. You'll start to hear your screaming leptin signals and naturally lose weight without keeping track of your calories. Because you can hear that you have a lot of energy on board. When you're eating a standard American diet as a fat fuck, you can't hear that. Your, your brain doesn't know you're carrying around hundreds of thousands of calories of fat on your body. But when you go keto, and this is why you lose weight on keto, this is not, has nothing to do with caloric deficit. Although technically you do end up in one because your hormones tell you you're not hungry. They do tell you you get full quicker because they, your hormones start to normalize to the point where you know you have all this fat on board. Now you've done a little damage over the years, so you're going to lose weight for a while when you first go keto and you fast. But as your leptin levels start to drop, you're going to get to what I call the set point. And this, I didn't know any of that shit back then. And uh, once you get to that set point, your hormones are going to maintain your, um, your weight by shifting your metabolism. So if you overeat a bunch of things on keto, your hormones will upregulate your metabolism. You'll get sweaty hot, kind of like I am right now. You will be more energetic in terms of going out and exercising you'll have that push to do things um and this is assuming you got the calories in in the time it took for you to get full that's the other issue if you're not eating enough fat 
you're going to run into this caloric deficit, and then the reverse will happen. Your metabolism will drop a little. You might even put on a little weight. I see the biggest mistake I see with a lot of people that are keto and fasting is they don't eat enough when they're supposed to. Um, because you do get satiated much quicker on the ketogenic diet, it's really easy to undereat on a ketogenic diet. And if you do it consistently and you're doing ludicrous amounts of fasting on top of it, you could end up with a lower metabolism. The, the difference is with a ketogenic diet, you can ramp that metabolism right back up by overeating again. It's really that simple. So if you ever feel like you're cold, you got no energy, you, you're kind of shitty, you know, symptoms of a dropped metabolism and you're keto, add an extra meal to your day and make it a nice hearty meal. Um, don't be afraid to go over your limit on the ketogenic diet calorically. You should never count calories on a ketogenic diet because if you ramp up your metabolism, you won't gain, uh, you'll gain a couple pounds, you'll be panicking, and then it'll stop going up. I've seen it, I've done it, I've done it intentionally, and I've done it unintentionally. Um, keto allows your hormones to do their job, whereas if you're eating junk food, you know, kind of the theme of this video, can you just lose weight with eating junk food? The answer is yes, but you're going to run into the metabolic drop, which will cause you to be hungrier, and it'll cause you to binge when you do eat because you won't get full as quickly. Not to mention a great deal of the standard American diet will not fill you up. So if you were watching this video like you're brand new and you just clicked this shit going, I want to eat junk and lose weight, you can do it, but it's going to suck. And it's going to have long term the same results that eat less, move more has. As in, you'll be able to maintain it for a long time. You can probably maintain it easier than eat less, move more, to be honest with you. Um, but you're still going to have the hunger and you're still not going to feel full as quickly, which means you'll never be satisfied completely. And that's what I ran into. That's why I started looking into it and discovered keto and have been keto ever since is to get past that hunger problem. And, you know, because you could theoretically fast off weight every time you gained it. Like, say you were eating the standard American diet, you put on 10 pounds, well, guess what? You go do fucking 10-day fast, that 10 pounds is gone. But you're going to very quickly regain that 10 pounds because your metabolism dropped and stayed there because you're eating the standard American diet on your refeeds. And the next time, you know, you might even plateau that way. You'll, you'll, and then you'll constant. The longer you do that pattern, where you're doing these fasts to mitigate the regains that you eat when you're eating the junk, you're, it, it's, you're fucking with your metabolism. It stays low, and then you're always hungry. And I ran into that. I was always hungry, and when I ate, I literally couldn't fucking stop. Like, I could pound four or 5,000 calories of that standard American diet and not feel full. That's the point I was getting to, because I was just fasting too much and eating shitty. You can fast a lot less on a ketogenic diet and eat and be full and not miserable and not hungry. That is the difference. Not to mention the health effects that come with the standard American diet that you will not be able to outfast. And that is diabetes, heart disease, all of these diseases, not to mention all the autoimmune implications because you're getting boatloads of glyphosate into you from all the grain products. It's not a healthy diet. And I still had hives back then. I still got sick. I still had headaches. My, you know, they started to get improved over the regular standard American diet. So standard American diet plus fasting is healthier than just standard American diet, but not by much is my point. And I did lose quite a bit of weight in the beginning while still doing pop tarts and, and it, it became less frequent over time. At first I would do cheat weekends and cheat this and cheat that. And, and then I would just do psycho crazy fucking eating during the cheat. Like, it would be a whole fucking food binge holiday where I would eat pizzas and all kinds of shit. And then I would regain 10 fucking pounds. And, we're, and I think I actually, one of the videos I picked kind of goes over this a bit. 
And then I would spend another week fasting to try and get rid of the 10 pounds I fucking gain and I break even. And then I end up in this pattern where I have to fast a bunch and then I had to fucking eat. And then I fucking, and the, the eating windows were shrinking and the fasting windows were growing and I was getting hungrier and more miserable with it. And that's the, that's where I was at. So let's kind of give you an idea. If you think you're going to eat the standard American diet, which includes tutti fucking fruity from Double Delta Zero. Uh, and lose weight, you can do it. It can be done. But it is about as effective as eat less, move more in terms of hunger, satisfaction, and, you know, survivability, long longevity. You ha you're going to need more and more willpower as the longer you do the this pattern because you are fasting more often than you're eating. Your body is, is tr struggling to keep your metabolism low. And in the process, you're going to be prone to binges. Um, I think uh, Mariah, it's, I forget her name, but she's a YouTuber I see struggled with this, with fasting and binge eating. Um, and I, you know, I tried, I think I tried talking to her in the comments about it. Uh, but it straight up was a thing that I believe she was just fasting and not eating properly enough and not eating enough when she did eat. Um, you should always refeed without caloric restriction after a long fast for double the period of time that you're fasting, and that should be ketogenic so that you can ramp your metabolism back up. Because after the first four days of a fast, yes, your, your metabolism does go up during the first three days, but starting at day four, it will gradually decline, and the longer you do a long fast, the lower that metabolism will go. Also, depending on, it, like, if you're really obese, it your metabolism drop will be very slow. If you're just overweight, you're going to see that metabolism drop a lot quicker. A um, Dustin Dump. In my weight loss, I feel I have to try new things every eight pounds. I recently started the fasting thing, but I'm not really a fan. Um, so I don't know if you're new to my shit. Uh, I wouldn't even start out with fasting. If I had this to do over again, I would have just went keto. And keto will naturally put you in a 16 and 8 pattern. Just do keto. Eat when you're hungry. Don't eat. eat stop eating when you're full. And that's it. For six to eight weeks, do that. Then, and you'll notice a weight loss during that period. And you can just keep going until the weight loss stalls, too. You don't even have to start fasting right away. But you will find you don't need breakfast. You can go five, six hours between meals. And then when you do eat, you don't need to eat a ton. I've seen it. I've seen it in action. My mother, she went keto. She doesn't fast. She doesn't fast at all. But when she sits down to eat, she gets full really quick. Really quick. Um, and that's the benefit of keto. It takes that hunger away. You know, you might go, it doesn't take the cravings away right away. So if you're addicted to sugar and, and grain and that kind of shit, it's going to take a while for you to get over that addiction and that requires complete abstinence for quite a while before you just don't crave that shit anymore you have to retrain your brain on what is good for you because your brain's like i need energy and it was used to getting it based on your blood sugar it isn't until we switch that over to keto to the ketones being our fuel source to being the majority of time we're in ketosis that we shift so that you don't even crave that shit anymore. I do not crave that shit. I'll do it every once in a while on a cheat day, but when I go to the store, I'm not saying, oh, I should get that. You know, when I'm at a party and they got all the shitty foods, I'm like, nah, no, nah, I'm not, not interested. Whereas I used to be like, oh, shit, there it is. There's the fucking cheesecake. 78 grams of sugar. Oh, my God, and it's next to the cookies. The fucking cookies. And the, the glyphosate, and the fucking glyphosate, and the grain. I, I need it. I, I, you know, that's that's gone. I don't I haven't had that for years. It does go away, but I will say, it's very difficult in the fucking beginning. You're not going to be able to easily do this shit when you're first starting out. And that's why so many people try the diet and fail. And then you have people like Dr. Greger out there saying, Keto diet's a piece of shit, so they go vegan. You know, or they do other things. They, they're bouncing all over the place looking for the quick, easy deal for weight loss. And they don't get there because they don't give, you know, keto a good, solid try to work. 
And fasting is something that everyone can do on any diet. That's the difference there. And it is a great supplement to any diet, even the standard American diet. If you fast, you're going to do better than just somebody who just eats standard American diet all the time. Um, it's not easy. Hunger comes in waves. Once you've trained yourself, though, it's less frequent. And when you're on keto and you're fat adapted, those hunger pangs that you get for fasting are minimal easily especially if you've already done fasting and then you go keto you'll find that the fasts are just so much fucking easy it's easier i mean it's it's effortless because your hunger level goes up to maybe oh yeah i really would like to eat but okay i won't whereas when you're standard american dieter and that hunger pain comes you're like i want to fucking murder somebody if i don't fucking eat right now i'm gonna uh, that fucking food and everyone's eating around you everyone's offering you food you know it's like being in the desert thirsty and uh, you're surrounded by water that you can't drink. It's, you know, it, it's like that. You know, people need to just realize that that's all biologically driven. That hunger is is hormonally driven. And those hunger pangs pass. And while they're more severe as a standard American dieter, they do pass. Still, 30 to 45 minutes Find something to occupy yourself. Don't think about food. Don't be near food during that time. Make it through the hunger pang, and then you're not hungry. It's best to occupy yourself. Keep yourself busy during those hunger pangs. Um, But keto, the hunger pangs are mild when they happen on a long fast, and they go away. When I was on my wilderness fast out there in the woods, I was working my ass off, building fire, gathering wood, doing all of that shit, and only drinking water from the lake. And I was not hungry the entire fucking time out there. I didn't get hungry till the hike out, where I was really burning a lot. Um, and I was losing a pound a day on that. No, Nowhere near as hungry as I used to be on Standard American Diet with a fast of that length. Just a 72-hour fast in the Standard American Diet was miserable compared um, to the Wilderness Fast as a fat-adapted individual on keto so there's that <clears throat> like you walked into an I, it's a shitty fucking uh, uh metaphor oh, double delta <laughs> uh dave 101 the shitty part about going over non non keto friends they often insist on offering cake paste and, well yeah it's a social thing you know i can't you can't go to a party without that shit my friends have pretty well been trained to have at least one thing i can fucking eat like i've been to parties now where there's a lot more meat and fat and to be honest with you some of them have are are trending towards low carb but not quite keto so that helps as well uh but as long as there's meat of some kind at a function i just go for the meat and leave the other shit set if there's some berries i'll occasionally have like strawberries or blueberries those are rare as well um, and generally I'm allowed up to 50 grams of carbs, so I can, I can do that and not have a problem. Your carb tolerance may be different than mine, you know, and I already have gone over in the past how to figure that out. So let's continue. Thank you, Dustin Dump for the follow. Lifestyle that I've decided to change and be healthier and thin. I park as far fucking away as humanly possible. With the exception of Wi-Fi locations. That was a pretty long tangent I went on there. Yeah, you know, and you got to be closer to the building for that. But if I don't give a fuck about internet, I will park as far away as I can. Because it gives me... It makes me have to fucking get out of my truck and walk. And sometimes that's a half a mile. Or at least... A- if I only knew that I would be a hiker many years later. Now I hike quite a bit miles we did 10 miles in washington dc only lost a pound just goes to show eat less move more don't do shit a quarter mile there are some of the lots are fucking huge and if you park on the other side of them guess what you're getting exercise and you didn't even have to think about it you're just saying i'm going to get me a fucking cup of coffee and i gotta walk across the fucking parking lot it's gonna take me an hour no just fucking do it park further away same thing goes for normal people Everybody sits there and vultures for that spot that's right next to the fucking door. When all you're going to do, you could take an extra five to ten minutes out of your life and park in the fucking other end of the parking lot. And guess what? You got that much more exercise for the day. You burn that much more calories. 
but I'm getting off. Still on the calories in, calories out attention. back then. If only I, I knew. I decided as a truck driver, I don't want to be a fat fuck no more. I don't want to have diabetes. I don't want to have a fucking grabber. You know, yeah, if I had to choose a way to die, a grabber would probably be the way to go for me, but why force it? Why? Yeah, and honestly, it's good to do that still, but the difference between me then and me now, me then thought it contributed to weight loss to do that. Me now thinks it contributes to stamina and physical fitness to do that which is a completely different goal. And that's all exercise is fucking good for is to increase your muscle mass and your, you know, stamina in terms of endurance. Um, and it's something that is good to maintain, but it has nothing to do with how fat you are. You're not going to, to lose weight long term, you know, with exercise. Caloric deficit has a 98% fail rate in terms of weight, long-term weight loss. You, as in, sooner or later, the hunger always wins, and you will go back. Or you become lazy because your hormones are not... They're like, hey, we, need, we can't keep going to the gym and burning 3,000 calories, dickhead. You're not taking in enough food. So it makes you less motivated to go to the gym. Our brains are pretty tricky in terms of managing energy balance. And when they want to slow you to fuck down, they'll slow you to fuck down. So many people I know, I need to get back to the gym. And they then sh- they used to pound the fuck master all the time. I need to get back to the gym. Well, the reason they stop going to the gym is that caloric deficit kicks in and you, you're not motivated to go to the gym anymore. Your brain's like, look, you know, it's great and all. We could probably use a little bit more muscle, but you're just not eating enough. And it fucking sh- slows you down. And then the couch and Netflix looks a hell of a lot more appealing than pounding the fuck master over at the fucking thing and getting the lunk alarm rang on your ass, you know? Why pay to have a grabber? Which is what you're doing every time you're loading up on all that bullshit that you fucking see in the fast food places. You know, and a lot of people right now are watching this that know me and they're like, this guy's out of his fucking mind. What is he, fucking nuts? He's having a midlife crisis, you know? And, and that's the problem with our society. It's why we're all fucking fat. Because it is not socially acceptable to be healthy now. And this is experience talking at this point. You see... And it's still not as socially accepted, though. In the time since I made this video, keto has become more popular. Fasting has been more accepted. But back then, fasting was like heresy. You know, you're not eating for two days, you're going to fucking die. And I still get that occasionally. And I'm like, look, I've been doing this for almost five years now. Uh, you know, it'll be five years. This, this video was December of 20, what was it, 2014? Yeah, so I've been doing it almost five years. This year it will be five years in December. And, you know... I'm not dead. Didn't have any deficiencies that I'm aware of, so I think we're good. I'm pretty sure we're good. So, uh, let's see. What did I miss here? Fuck Netflix. Yeah, I agree. Fuck Netflix. Double Delta. Waldemar went to the gym yesterday, starting again. Take summers off. I'm sore as fuck right now. I need to get out on the trail more. That's my gym. Um, I'm not looking to go back to the gym. Uh, I did it for a while, and it felt good. And I was making gains. You could see the gains. Lost a little bit of those gains because I stopped going. Um, and I've lost a lot of uh, stamina and endurance because I'm not hitting the trail often enough with a weighted pack. Uh, I need to work on that. I definitely do. Uh, and winter's coming, so I'm going to have to road trip south to do that kind of stuff. And we will see. We'll see how it goes. But I do know that I haven't been getting out on the trail enough. It's going to happen. When I announced the... Did you see the bread line? Bernie wants to tax meat to save the planet. Oh, geez. Don't get me started on politics. But, yeah, the vegans have got their, their claws in the government. So, enjoy. Enjoy your meat before everything becomes a beyond fucking burger. I am going to eat healthier. And I'm going to fucking, you know, lose weight and intermittent fasting, which is the title of this video. It's why you're here. You know, when I say fasting, oh my god, do I get, I get fucking weird, like, <laughs> okay. True story. Anybody ever have somebody look at them like that? All right. 
Yeah. Or if I'm talking about it, people are like, okay, yeah, you're out of your fucking mind. But the fact of the matter remains, I'm not out of my fucking mind. This isn't a new thing that I'm doing. People have been trying to do it for years. You know, back in ancient times, everybody lived like that. Everybody. You ate what you could fucking kill and gather, and sometimes you didn't fucking eat for a couple days because you couldn't fucking kill or gather anything. Or there was a fucking snowstorm and there was nothing. So I was pretty much dead on back then on that one. Let's see here. Uh... Many are overweight because they eat their emotions instead of fixing their thoughts. That's true. Um, the standard American diet is often used as, as a form of medic self-medication. The reason is, is you get massive dopamine hits from the standard American diet. Uh, that same addiction could be fulfilled in other ways. You know, when I talk about my addiction transfer theory. But the majority of people are just, you know, I can't not, there's foods I gotta have. Like even Christy during the DC trip, there's, there's foods that I, I enjoy. I'm not giving them up, you know, it, it's, it's something that you really have to work on. And a lot of people don't even have the willpower to start to disengage from their addictions. Um, for me, I used addiction transfer as a means. Um, the dopamine that I was getting from those foods, I eventually went to alcohol to get. And then I went to hiking and get on nature, getting dopamine hits that way. I occasionally play video games and get dopamine hits there. I still get plenty of dopamine hits from my YouTube channel. Um, and these are all arguably better ways to get my dopamine than going to the food because honestly your brain doesn't give a shit which what's triggering the dopamine hit now there are some arguments that grains uh bind to opiate receptors so there's some addiction there that you'll have to overcome and uh that sugar fructose uh engages the same centers of pleasure as cocaine and is more addictive than cocaine there's research to back that up if you're into that science shit so you know these are all problems that people encounter that they're not willing to to go up against because it is hard when you first start out keto and you first start out fasting you're going to run into your addiction walls and it's going to take a little bit of thought and a lot of discipline to plow through that how's it going keto andy uk good to see you here again uh, let me catch up with the rest of the chat here my family doctors and they just think I'm retarded. Uh, that's not politically correct and shit. You're mentally challenged. You know, I'm trying to stay monetized here. Uh, everyone I think... Okay, sorry. Everyone I work with is used to me fasting now. I enjoy eggs and hamburger. Yelva. And that's the same with me. You know, being a YouTuber for this amount of time, everyone's pretty much aware of what I'm about. Some of them poke at me and, and do little fucking things to trigger me and jab at me about my diet, but that's really just them kind of feeling, trying to deal with their little insecurity about the fact that they're not taking care of themselves. Um, and I understand it. You know, bust my, I'm, I'm a ball buster in terms of friendships. You know, anybody that's friends with me knows I'll fucking make fun of all kinds of shit about them and they do the same to me and it's all in good fun. Um, but in underlying that is that re very real thing that I'm watching their health decay at the same rate mine was decaying, and it's kind of sad for me to to know that I could help them with that, but they don't want the help, and you can't force anybody to do this. They have to want to do it. So I always let them know I'm here. It, you know, when they complain to me about something, I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> there's a way you can deal with that. It doesn't involve going to the doctor, but... You know, a lot of times they just write me off, um, and that's their their choice. I just want them to do it knowing what they're doing, and a lot of them think I'm wrong about certain things, and they just have to learn the hard way. There's just nothing I, I'm going to be able to do to convince people, even here on YouTube. You know, I still get the, the occasional motherfucker that's just completely against everything I stand for, uh, because they don't. They haven't done their homework on this stuff. They haven't been doing it for years. And 
they don't have all the anecdotal data that I get. You know, I get all the feedback from you guys. You guys are always telling me the shit you're doing. In the comments, in the emails, here on DLive, you guys have told your story to me over and over again. And I hear a lot of the same consistent things from everybody, including the problems that we all encounter. So, you know, that's that's a thing. Um, getting through more of these. Let's see here. Uh, Double Delta, I started feeding my fat dog Keto. She lost 30% of her weight, and she is now perfect weight. Uh, that's something that if I'm concerned with as far as pet health, if you read the ingredients on the things that you're fortunate enough to see all the ingredients on, most of the pet food that we feed our pets has all kinds of carb filler in it, and that is a recipe for pet health. When you see a cat getting fat, Cats don't get fat in nature. They don't. If you're feeding your cat and it's getting fat, A, you're overfeeding it, but it's probably because the cat's hungry all the time because the cat's carved up and the cat's going to keep coming and bothering you, and it's not eating its natural diet. Cats and dogs are carnivorous. When you put a dog out in nature, it'll probably eat some shit that it finds, but for the most part, it'll hunt. And it'll eat fucking animals. You put a cat out in nature. What is it going to do? It's going to go kill mice and, and all kinds of small game. And that's how it's going to live. But when a cat doesn't have its food for a long time and you give it some fucking carbs, they'll eat it. And it's mixed in with meat and gravy and all kinds of other shit to make it taste like meat to the animal. In the meantime, it's forcing you to have to keep feeding your cat more often because, or your dog because they're going to be more hungry because they're eating that shit. It's this by design. It's by design. There's tinfoil hat time, everybody. Your pet food is designed for your pet to be hungry all the time. Plain and simple. Why? So you'll buy more fucking pet food. And some people are good about it. They only feed their animal certain times a day. Some people feed their animal every time their animal begs for food. Our pet health is just as fucked up as our standard American diet. And there's even less fucks given. I don't know why vegans aren't all over that shit. No, they're like, they're all about it. No, the, the fucking animals shouldn't be eating meat. When it's the other way around, they should be like, okay, all the animals should be eating animals. But that pokes holes in their whole, whole fucking logic, pretty much. So, but yes, if you're feeding your animal and your animal is becoming obese or having other health problems, you need to start feeding it some natural of its natural diet. And your animal might not like it at first, but given enough time, that animal will eat what you fucking give it. Uh, if you feed it carnivorously. So, yeah. They're not designed to eat the way we eat. They don't have the same enzymes. They don't have the same digestive systems that we have. So, but we're feeding it what we eat when we buy that pet food in the fucking grocery store. So, let's, what else we got here? That's next to the keto Facebook right at before and after. Let's see, hold on. I wish we could post pics of my dog before and after. Um... I wish DLive would allow... Well, that would probably get abused. They do allow stickers, so... I don't know. It probably takes up too much resources to post pictures. Um, I'll get Discord fired up at some point. I just have been fucking lazy about getting Discord going. Um, Double Delta Fromm's for pet food. Not all of uh, their food is keto, but some is. Um, yeah, just be mindful of, of the ingredients of the food you feed your pets. Because a lot of it has grain in it. And grain is essentially filler. It's how they fatten cows in industrial agriculture. You know, it's not the natural diet. And it has the same effect, almost amplified, on an animal that it does on a human. So, there's that. Keto Andy UK. I work in a hospital and my colleagues think I'm nuts until they saw me lose over three stone and look more healthy. Now I mentor others. Yes, lead by example is the only thing you can do to, to bring people to this. You know, they're not going to believe you at first. They're not even going to believe you after a while, depending on how addicted they are. Sooner or later, they're going to acknowledge that what they're doing isn't working and what you did worked, and they're going to ask you how to do it. And then just be there for them. You know, occasionally remind them of why they're struggling when they complain and they will they'll complain about their struggles growing or you know there was large amounts of time where you didn't get to fucking eat 
Did they fucking starve to death? No. Did so their bodies- this, this video is an hour long. We're not going to go through all of it, but we'll go through another 15 minutes of it because the other videos I want to get to as well. Shut down? No. But having eaten shit... Even back then, I eat, made long fucking videos. For so long, your body decides that this is how I'm going to live, and it adapts. Your body is fucking smart, believe it or not. A lot of people are fucking dumb, but their bodies are still smart. Their bodies are going to try and do whatever it takes to survive and with the least amount of effort. And guess what that least amount of effort is right now? Food being fucking available at a moment's notice, at a whim. Right now in this truck I have food. Just so I can reach out and grab it. I don't have to go out and hunt and kill and do all that other... No, it's right there. Just fucking bought it. The only hunting and killing I got to do is earning the paycheck to fucking pay for it not too rough it's not acceptable in this society you know like I said I've gotten just so many bad you know some people have fucking like I got a couple friends that were like yeah you know, I said I'm at the gym right now and they're I could hear him in the background he's fucking lying you know he's full of shit he's not in no fucking gym he ain't gonna get thin he's just gonna be fat forever and I understand why they think that because you know, that's kind of my personality. I I get obsessed with things, and I do them for a while, and then I lose interest and move on to my next obsession. I'm better about that now. I still am obsessed. But I've been obsessed about this for quite a while now. And that's kind of been my fucking pattern of life as of late. And you can see it on my YouTube channel, you know, just I bounce all over the place, you know, from video gaming to fucking, you know, to quadcopters which I'm still into it's just it's hard to fucking fly when it's fucking 10 below out I don't like freezing my ass off but uh you know I, I have a whole lot of interests and in, and in my attention's constantly focused on at least one or two of them and then it shifts to the next I would say I'm on the obsession side uh Dave 101 I do have some uh, obsessive compulsive tendencies um but I'm a lot more focused now than I used to be. I used to be all over the place. I seem like I I maintain my focus on things a little bit longer now since I've led this lifestyle. So I think it comes with the mental clarity aspect of it. Um, when you live in a constant brain fog of the standard American diet uh, without any fasting, you're not very mentally clear and it's hard to focus on anything, really. Thing to the next thing. Sometimes it comes full circle, but... In any case, right now, my interest is, is, does fat shaming even a little bit help? No, not really. In fact, that'll offend people, and this is the outrage culture days. Um, I always talk shit back then because I was fat. I do so a lot less now. Um, you know, I'm not like a snake diet guy going, hey, fatty, you know. But I used to talk like that a lot and, and be like, it, it really... I don't know. I, I don't think we should be glorifying getting fat the way we are. Uh, the, that seems to be the the way the left is moving in terms of culture, that, that fat people are oppressed. Um, I think the entire population is oppressed in terms of our diet and food system, and uh, a great deal of people who are sick are not fat. That's the problem. Everyone associates this shit with fat. I know plenty of skinny... I know one guy skinny as a fucking rail. Blood sugar 350. And not doing anything about it. Why? Because he's skinny. Fat people are at least more likely to try and do something about it. Skinny people aren't fucking motivated to. They're like, I'm, I don't know what you're talking about. Look at me. I'm great. Meanwhile, they got the fatty liver gut going and, you know, a little bit of signs that things aren't all fucking healthy. But they keep going because they're not obese. And that's something a lot of people don't understand about this. You don't have to be fat to go keto. It You need to fix your health. And the, the sad thing is, is some people will never get fat. But they'll fucking drop dead of a heart attack at age 45, 50. They'll fucking have a stroke before they're 65. But they're not fat. They could have easily prevented that by going keto. Maintain their body weight and everything. See, everyone jumps into this for the aesthetic reasons, you know, and some morbidly obese understand the health ramifications of it, but there's the majority of sick people outnumber the fat people, you know, I forget what it was Dr. Lustig that presented the graph that showed 
that there are more metabolically sick thin people than there are metabolically sick fat people. Percentage-wise, the majority of obese are metabolically ill. It's uh, They're more protected from succumbing to those illnesses right away than the thin people that are metabolically sick. And if you're watching this and you're not fat and you're eating the standard American diet, you're, you could easily succumb to one of these diseases and die before your time. Or most likely just end up in the healthcare system chronically for the rest of your adult life and then die in the nursing home, which we all know what that leads to. So, you know, these are all things that people don't take into account. You know, everyone's all about, oh, I'm fat, I'm going to go do keto. Well, what about you, you skinny fuck? you got fatty liver and shit. You, you know, you're fucking diabetic already. You're fucking blood pressure's way up you're about to have a fucking grabber uh maybe keto's for you so so what if you look skinny doesn't fucking matter at that point you're still sick more and more people are sick Th those of us who were genetically blessed to get fat of which i count myself among that we're we're better off believe it or not because we can see that we're fucking up we can look in the mirror and be like oh shit i better stop this the skinny fucker's looking in the mirror going, I'd fuck me. I'd fuck me hard. You know, they're not sitting there going, oh, I need to go to the fucking doctor. I'm not doing too well. Because they're busy saying, oh, I look good, so I must be fine. You know, that's a common misconception that, you know, that even I back then, I didn't understand that completely. You know, that it wasn't just me you know, yeah, it started because I wanted to lose weight, but I also noticed the other health ramifications with that. There are plenty of skinny people that go through the same thing. The diabetes, the high blood pressure, the heart disease, the autoimmune illnesses, the lethargy, the energy crises. But they're not becoming obese because they're genetically limited in the amount of fat cells they produce. So that fat is still spilling out into their visceral organs, into their liver. They're getting fatty liver. They're getting fatty pancreas. That, of course, leads to insulin resistance. And then that leads to your arteries getting clogged. You start having strokes and heart attacks. And they're bone thin. I know a guy in his 60s that's had two heart attacks since I've known him. Skinny as a fucking rail. Drinking soda. And it's fucking sad. That people won't wake up unless they get fat. So, I don't know how we went from fat shaming to all the way down that rabbit hole, but my point is, is most fat people are sick, but so are the skinny people. And yes, it is good to, to alert somebody who is overweight or obese that, look man, you're not healthy. It is not good to call them names and, and tear them down that way, you know. And most of them do self-deprecating humor anyway. Hey, I'm a fat fuck and I'm happy to be fat. And, you know, I used to do all of that. When I was fat, I was, I was proud of it. I wore like a badge of honor. I would tell everybody I'm a fat fuck because it takes the steam out of anybody else calling me a fat fuck. But for the most part, this movement to turn them into a, a, an, an oppressed class... I do not agree with because that is going to give people who are unhealthy, who are sick, who are going to fall victim to the health wall, be in the healthcare system, and die an early death, all because it's okay to be fat. It's not okay to be fat. It's not. Not if your health is fucked. If you're fortunate and you're fat and you're metabolically good, you're not, you don't have diabetes, you don't have heart disease, you don't have high blood pressure, you don't have autoimmune illness. You got energy, you can do shit physically. And you're carrying a few extra pounds, more power to you. But you better be spot on with all of that. Because otherwise, is a very good symptom that you're not metabolically healthy. And to normalize it and make it, you know, a protected class would eliminate our ability to tell people, hey, you're getting too fat. You might want to fucking eat better. You might want to go to the doctor. You might want to go to the gym. You know, although I think telling an obese individual go to the, go to the gym is still the wrong move. 
fix the diet first. Go to the gym after you've lost some of the weight. Otherwise, you're liable to injure yourself. So that's that's my thoughts on the whole fat acceptance movement. You know, it was a nice little tangent. My health and my fatness. If you only eat organic beef, fish, and avocado, you don't need to read the ingredients. Yeah, if you has an ingredient list you probably shouldn't eat it so there's that uh yalva i've never met that unicorn are you talking about like the skinny sick people because i know tons of those um i agree most obese people is because they've been lied to just like the rest of us about diet um and they still are you know and they're still told to do the wrong things that's the other thing you know they will listen to the eat less move more weight watcher oprah's of the world i mean how many times we've seen oprah get thin and fat over the years and yet she's championing weight washers you know i mean at at what point do we wake up and say well it's it's not fucking working. I mean, I've watched her go up and down on this ro- yo-yo ride my entire fucking life and never quite getting to that super thin level. You know, at what point do we say, hey, well, uh, eat less, move more, and, and Weight Watchers doesn't fucking work. So, you know. I meet patients every day that are... Uh, all through, uh, all through food, I'm not sure. You must be having phone autocorrect issues there. But can't advise them or you'd get fired. Yeah, and doctors' hands are tied in a lot of cases, especially if they're not in their own practice. Um, you know, private practice doctors have it a lot better. They can integrate some of this into their practice without too much ridicule. But uh, hospital doctors, they're tied. Their hands are tied with them fucking, uh, you know, with... The Bible of health fed to them by the pharmaceutical industry through the university systems and the science that's corrupted by the industry as well, uh, which is, you know, scary. But yet people still treat all doctors as if they're anointed and they know best. And I've met ignorant doctors. I've met stupid doctors. Dr. Greger comes to mind. But uh, I haven't met him, but he probably doesn't like me too much and I definitely don't like him at all. Um, and I always say, Hey, if your doctor's at least listening to you and not telling you to stop, which you can get away with, you know, if someone comes to you as a doctor and and you say, and you ask them how their health improved and they go, Oh, I've been doing keto. As long as you don't say, well, you shouldn't do that. It's unhealthy. Here's, here's your pills, you know? Then I would listen to that doctor. If, the, if I went to a doctor and they're like, no, you need to stop keto and here's your pills, I, I'm not going to that doctor anymore. That's just me. Doctor shop for a doctor that is at the very least knowledgeable enough to not tell you to stop. Um, so that's that's my thoughts on that. I, a retired doctor advised me to go on a low-carb diet. Yeah, and a lot of them are starting to know this. And they're knowing that they can't with a straight face tell you it's unhealthy at this point because of the results you're getting you know they've been fucking telling you to do the same thing for all these years and it didn't work and then you come in with this new thing that suddenly fucking works what are they gonna do and be like no you need to go back to doing what i've been telling you all this time and then they look fuck stupid for that you know so uh I'm, i'm glad to see i'm hearing a lot more of the experts start to get on board but there's still going to be a massive pushback. Even to this day, I am still getting articles out of the media, um, news stories that slam the ketogenic diet. We just had a study come out recently uh, that says it in ketogenic diet is promotes inflammation. Um, I haven't covered this topic yet. It's in my list of shit to do, but it's just another corrupt fucking biased science paper designed to discredit our diet that will be cited by vegans for years to come. So, you know, that's... In the end, if you've been keto a while, you know it fucking works. I've maintained my weight loss effortlessly. Like, I don't fucking exercise enough right now, and I'm still 195, not gaining weight, eating what the fuck I want that's keto, occasionally even having cheat days and not moving the needle much on them as far as weight goes. We have other symptoms that pop up when I do that. But at the same time, I, I've i done this for almost five years now. There's no fucking study that's going to come out that's going to convince me it's fucked at this point. 
My labs uh, a year ago were fine. I'm anticipating my labs next week will be fine. We'll find out. And if I'm wrong, I'll figure out why. I'll do the appropriate level of self-experimentation and go in my appearance. There. So I think I've I've finished this video. Of course, you can watch this whole video and, and, and comment on it and tell me how dumb I was and what I was wrong about in it, but I'm sure there's plenty more. <laughs> I do. Howdy, folks. Thank you for the follow, Alpercessor. I do want to get to a couple other videos uh, that are a little bit shorter. Let's see. Uh, I'll do a brief, I'm not going to watch this whole video too, because I do want to get to my most viewed video, which is 57,000 views right now, and so many people come into my channel through this video that I felt I needed to do a massive update on it, so. Scott, in four or five sentences, how do fasts compare... How do fat fast compare to an actual fast as to weight loss? Uh, as far as weight loss, roughly the same. Uh, I was losing a pound a day on a fat fast, uh, just like you would lose a pound a day on a water fast. Um, you just don't get as much autoph uh, autophagy benefits. Um, but other than that, I found that the results were the same. It slowed the metabolic drop. I was able to fast longer without as much metabolism drop, um, as in I didn't get cold and, and lose my energy uh, as quickly. I wasn't as hungry on a fat fast uh, as I would be later, you know, in the early stages of the water fast, though hunger does pass uh, after the first four days or so. Um, overall, it worked like a champ, and it's not a new thing. Atkins used to do it to break plateaus back in the day. Um, I just combined the the theories behind that and the theories behind uh the fasting mimicking diet to say hey there's here's a a crutch for people who can't do a straight water fast for long periods of time and if you fall into that category where you're struggling with the long water fasts fat fasting is a viable alternative that was probably more than five sentences but i have to really struggle to not talk you know it's my thing it's my curse that's why this video is already going to be two hours long which will make all my YouTube customers happy. Fuck up. I fucked up. Oh, wait. That's the 46 pounder. We want to go to the side effects. One of the effects of intermittent fasting is you'll get an extra two inches on your cock. That's right. Because <laughs> I just got demonetized again. All of that fat that's around your fucking dick right now will shrink away and melt away, leaving an extra inch or two of fucking penetration. So next time you go balls deep, your girlfriend will completely support you fasting. That video is going to get deleted someday. Let's see. Week 5, weigh in, 230 pounds. Lost 13.8 pounds. Total loss this week, 2.5 pounds. Three 24-hour fast, three 16-hour fast. Two days of resistance training, one day of cardio. Well, in case you haven't guessed, this video is about the side effects of fucking intermittent fasting, particularly alternate day fasting. Now, uh, what was your daily fat, Yelva asked, what was your daily fat consumption during your fat fast? Did you keep track of how much or just cream and coffee? It was just cream and coffee. Um, I did do a version of it where I had a small amount of protein and I found that that did spike hunger levels. Um, and probably got rid of autophagy at the same time. So, yeah, I just put my heavy cream in my coffee and, you know, have a couple pots of that. And I'm good to go for the day. About six to 800 calories worth of fat, depending on how much coffee you drink. Um, and, yeah, it worked fine. Worked like a champ. So, well, actually what's happening is a two-inch increase. <laughs> this is my personal fucking observations some of it might be diet based some of it might be motherfucking exercise based side effects i don't know but here's what i've experienced as side effects aside from my dick having a little bit more room to breathe i've noticed that i'm losing fat in my arms and legs at an accelerated rate and my face so it is. That, that's true. That's the first spots that I, I lost weight, and to this day, still 
thin on the arms, thin on the face, necks thin as fuck, veins can pop out. I don't know if I can, I can't command my veins to pop out. And, uh, yeah, legs, people are complimenting my calves, but belly's the last to go. It's clear that alternate day fasting puts you in a fucking caloric deficit. So I was way off there. I still didn't. I was still on the eat less, move more, calories in, calories out fucking dogma. You, one of the side effects of fasting for at least 24 hours and then only having 600 calories is you will lose weight. And then the next day you eat fucking normal. By normal, I mean maintenance, motherfuckers. I don't mean go down to CeCe's Pizza and fucking load up on fucking 10 different flavors of fucking pizza followed up by some fucking fat-ass cinnamon bread. No. I'm talking eat your maintenance calories. If you haven't figured out how to do your fucking maintenance calories or to figure out your calories you need per day, there's this thing that they invented called Google, you know, that's currently trying to take over the fucking earth, but instead they're just gathering all the information and letting you look at it. There you go. Go into Google and say, how do I figure out my calories? And you can even write, how do I figure out my calories, bitch? And I'm pretty sure it'll still tell you the answer. Okay, leaving that off, that little tangent aside. Next side effect. The days I fucking fast, I have more energy and a, and a feeling of jitteriness a little bit. And if I had to compare it to something, it's like when you have a little bit of an adrenaline rush, you know, it's, it, that, it's that kind of feeling, you know, it's a little, you're a little bit, you feel lighter and more active. And we all have experienced that. If you've fasted, you know about the mental clarity aspect of it. Um, I didn't know that it was adrenal related, that you do release adrenaline, especially during the first 72 hours that leads to that. Um, on longer fasts, uh, that energy level drops, but the mental clarity remains. You're able to focus. You're pretty mentally clear. Um, but physical performance does tend to drop around day four or five. I know this because I tried hiking out of the woods, fasted, it didn't work out. Um, I was getting lightheaded. I was having trouble carrying the 60 pound pack. It, it was a rough, rough hike. Um, and it's the second time I did that fasted hiking. And I, I know that it's a little over the top to do that level of physical activity while fasted. So mentally sharp, the whole fast physically that declines after about four or five days. Um, and you settle into a normal routine. Uh, but you do lose a lot of fat during that, those heavy duty hikes. Consequently, on the other side of that spectrum, the days you eat normal, you're going to feel like a big, lazy piece of shit. And that's with the standard American diet. That's right. Your body's going to say, oh, you just ate fucking a huge 800 calorie fucking meal. It's time to lay down and go take a nap. And that is entirely because of the standard American diet. If, I, if you refeed with keto, you don't get that. And I didn't know that because I was a fucking idiot. So, yeah, when you refeed ketogenically, plenty of energy. Good to go. Refeed standard American diet, feel like a bag of shit, lazy. It's usually because your metabolism drops a little and you don't fully recover. And then you're still, I was still keeping myself in a, in a caloric deficit with exercise. I was counting calories at that time. Um, and the result carb crash and you're still blood sugar based uh you don't fat adapt on a long fast you're, it's not efficient you're going to piss out all kinds of extra ketones when you do get to ketosis because you haven't set yourself up to run off of that energy efficiently um you're kind of forcing that fuel in by fasting but yeah when you refeed on a standard american diet in addition to not being satisfied being prone to binge eating and, american ever and hungry, thank you dave 101 and shit um you know you're 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 just not going to bounce back as efficiently when you do a standard american diet unfortunately so so yeah that's the other thing i fucking noticed you you on the days i eat is the days i'm low energy not the days i fast I don't know what the fucking deal is. 
Thank you, Yelva, for the diamond. If maybe my body just got used to not having to spend all that time digesting so that when I fucking put food in there, it's like got to use all the energy that it, you know, plus it's refilling the glycogen stores and all of that bullshit. So I'm sure that that's where it is. Instead of, we're normally when you're eating and you're in a fed state all the time, Greatest you're fucking, you're, you're, you're. Thank you, Keto Andy, for the diamond. You're taking your energy from the calories you're consuming. I get the impression now, and this is completely just fucking opinion at this point. I have no scientific research or none of that bullshit. But I feel like my body's just taking everything I eat and putting it away. You know, refilling the glycogen, maybe stuffing some of them fat cells, you know. And instead of using it, it's using the bare minimum to keep me functional and then putting it away. And then... On the days I, uh, I that's I was kind of all over the place with that, but you know, I I'm I'm kind of right there in terms of when you do this in a standard American diet, a lot of the food that you take in is going to be converted to glycogen, with the exception of fructose. I didn't know that back then. Fructose will be converted to fat in your liver. So when you stuff that big 7,600 grams of carbs in and it has lots of sugar in it, you're making liver fat. More fatty liver you doesn't convert the, the fructose. It do, does not get converted into glucose. It gets converted into fat and lipids. I need a new mic setup. I need one of them clamp fucking thingies that springs and shit. Um... So yeah, that's that's where I kind of didn't understand back then, but I do understand now that you know fructose if you are doing refeeds on the standard American diet as a intermittent faster, you still need to keep the sugar way down because overloading with fructose gets converted into fat, which is kind of counterproductive for you doing the fasting in the first place. And a lot of the glucose that you need will refill your glycogen stores. But once it's full, guess what? You're making fat again. Lots of fat. Uh, and it doesn't take much to refill the tank. Because the only tank you're really refilling, you know, unless you did like three hours of endurance fucking exercise while you were fasting, your muscles still have plenty of glycogen in them usually. Unless you're doing like a five-day fast. Five-day, you'll you'll drain a lot of the glycogen out of your muscles. Uh, but your liver only holds around 900 to 1,000, depending on your liver, uh, calories of glycogen. And generally around 12 to 24 hours is about the amount of time it takes to drain that down, and you start producing ketones. It's the, f it's the first place that drops in glycogen. Your muscles ha use their own glycogen. And you carry about 2,000 calories total of glycogen, depending on your muscle mass. Obviously, if you have more muscle, you carry more uh, calories. But bottom line, it's all about the liver and whether or not you are going to get kicked into ketosis. So when the liver's low on, on glycogen, it starts making ketones. When it's filled, it starts making fat. That's basically what happens. A lot of vegans don't understand that, too. You keep that fucking glycogen in your liver topped off you're making fat like no tomorrow so john and marston need to go to bed it's late here in marston county i'll catch the replay later thanks for stopping by this part of the podcast will be posted on youtube uh tonight later tonight i'll get it up before i go to bed hopefully that's the plan anyway we'll see how it goes i am filming three videos so it might even be tomorrow i don't know so that's it for that video. You can, of course, check that out later. Let's get to my best video. The one that everyone is somehow found, even to this day, still gets views, even though it's so fucking old. How old is it? It's not as old as the other ones. This is from 2015, and it's several, you know, I, don't, I forgot how many weeks in it, it was, but it'll tell me in the beginning of this video. So this is the video that everyone clicks on and I think it I'm not promoting eating junk if I remember right but we'll see suppose I'm going to diet hell now huh oh. 
Uh, All right. So this is the before and after. Um, I'm a little thinner now than this as far as body goes. Arms are definitely uh, a little bit more defined. I'm more vascular. I'm more thinner in the face. But I got away from doing this kind of shit mainly because I don't want that to be the focus. Remember where I told you, you know, there are plenty of thin people that are sick? I wanted to focus more on that. So I don't do before and after body shots anymore. And quite frankly, nobody's going to look at my body and be like, oh, well, I want to do what he's doing. Um, but yeah, this is it. You see the stretch marks and the loose skin action down here. And it's it's fairly close to where I am today. Um, though I am starting to see more definition in this area, uh, and there's some actual like indentations down here, and I've still got this ugly sack down here, and you can tell there's lots of loose skin action, and to this day I still have that loose skin action, and whenever I bloat, this area gets pretty bloated in this, you know, where the liver is, and, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the little before and after there. Let's get the side view. So that's 21 weeks of just fasting with the standard American diet, which, as I said, you can do it, but this is around the time I was getting miserable with it, and when I'm talking about I fucked up, it was because I had cheat days, and some chimps cheat weeks, or, you know, I was bouncing in and out. You can see the bit huge difference there and that you can see that still that same pr progress. I'm not as fat in the belly area. I'm even less so now. I think I was 37, 38 inches in that picture. Um, now I'm down to 35, so it, it's it's gotten a lot thinner. But yeah, that's that's my fat ass back then. And that is like, uh, what was it? What did I say? Week two, was it? Or week one? <laughs> Week three, yeah. So that was week three, and that was week 21. And it's 198 pounds. I am now 195, but I've recomped a little bit. Um, and there's more muscle definition in the arms that I have now. And so th there's been a little bit of, of recomposition of my weight uh, over the years. It's not uh, dramatic from them. So I'm probably still pretty close to looking like this, I would say. Um even when I got down to 179, it didn't stay there very long, and so I've lost a lot over the the course of my uh, existence and regained some. Suck. Suck. Anyways, week 20. My experiment for the week was to not count calories, and. Basically, I stuck to my 20-hour fast, my four-hour eating window, and no ca no counting calories whatsoever. So, I did that, and uh, I gained three fucking pounds. Oh, shit. You done fucked up your whole diet, you motherfucking bitch. No. Didn't fuck up my whole diet. In fact, I think the, that being my first plateau. Now, to me, a plateau is you go three, four weeks without losing weight. That's a plateau. One week does not a plateau make. Uh, just noticed. Uh, Dave 101, do you have a clue on how much your mic clamp would cost? Uh, don't worry about it, Dave. I, I can figure it out. I'm, I, tr I, just, I just now bought the, the capture card and I'm working on my setup. It's just a main, minor pain in the ass, um, you know. I don't know. I, I haven't even researched a better solution. I am considering going with a headset that has it because of the earbuds being a pain in the ass sometimes, but then I have to sit here with the fucking headset on, so I don't know. I, it's, it's, I wouldn't be concerned with it, Dave. Um, Walder, Waldemar, I'd rather lift weights than fast, but I have personal reasons for that. I tried the gym while fasting once. It was okay. And you know what? If you're keto... You're going to fast naturally. You're going to do 16 and 8. You know, unless you're forcing yourself to get up in the morning and eat. Or you're forcing yourself to eat three, four meals a day. Uh, if you just eat when you're hungry on keto, you'll fa you're, you're intermittent fasting. You're doing 16 and 8 at the very least. And maybe eating two meals a day. 
Um, if you're doing that, that's a fasting routine. That's considered fasting, believe it or not. Um, as for long fasts, if you're keto, you kind of, I mean, they're good to clean up, clean up the mess a bit, you know, make your health improve because we do need to clean house. You know, autophagy does need to take place. And if you're taking in protein consistently, you're not really going deep into autophagy. Uh, and we are designed to, to clean up our, our mess uh, because we used to have to regularly go two, three days in between meals. Um, and our body took that opportunity to clean up all the waste, all the dead cells, all the, the damaged cells, all the cancer wannabe cells, that kind of stuff. Um, break them down and use them for nutrition that we aren't taking in because we aren't eating. I always say it's it's good for fasting is good for tearing shit down and then you go and build it up and build it new, build it brand new. Um, so and as far as weightlifting, it, it's almost advisable to do some kind of fasting routine, but making sure that you're feeding your workouts, you know, so you need to overeat if you're trying to build muscle or you're looking to regenerate muscle, uh, tear it down with the fast a little bit build it back up brand new and you'll find you'll you'll get some nice strength increases out of it at least i did um so yeah uh went better than i thought um <laughs> thanks uh dave for the stay awesome break. so it's okay it's not the end of the fucking world sometimes you gotta fuck up it keeps you going. It keeps you motivated. It keeps you sane. So, I fucked up. So I was like, oh shit. Week 21 comes. And I'm like, well, time to get back on the ball. So I reduced my calories. Start counting calories again. Reduce my calories to fat loss, which is a 500 calorie deficit. And for me, if you use your fitness calculator that you download off the motherfucking internets, then you can figure out your shit. But... And now I would say go keto, do not count calories, fix your hormones, and once your hormones are working, you will straight up lose weight without counting calories. I had to learn the hard way, didn't work out very well. I eat keto, low calories and cardio days, and then keto feast on the weightlifting days, I'm loving it so far. And yeah, uh, just always feed your... Do not be in a cal caloric deficit. There's no need to. Um, feed your muscles when you're tearing them down in the gym. Um, and ramp up your metabolism. And you'll spontaneously fast. On, on Greatest American ever lived! Keto. So. Keto Andy UK. Thanks for the diamond. Gotta go to sleep. It's late here in the UK. Night all. Is it getting that late? It's only 6 p.m. here, so we're, it's early for me. But uh, thanks for hanging out. And we're about to wrap up this first video here soon. Um, we'll get through a little bit more of this. For me, 1,800 calories per day is a 500 calorie deficit, which allows me to lose weight. Now, a lot of people say that fasting in and of itself can provide you with a calorie deficit, and that's true, as illustrated by the fact that I did a maintenance regimen where I ate maintenance calories, which for me is 2,300, every day. And because I work 36-hour fasts in there, I was getting my deficit that way. But my new protocol... And, you know... When you're fat adapted, that works in principle, but when you're a sugar burner, it's a little different. You know, first of all, you got to get through that 2,000 calories. At the same time, you're going to ramp down your metabolism over time, especially if you're doing a lot of fasts. Um, so I was, a, I was a bit off back then. Um, essentially, I just needed to be keto most of the time and do moderate fasting. You don't even have to do long fasts if you're keto. They help, they clean things up, they heal, they tear down, you know, fucked up tissue that you can later rebuild very easily. And overall, it's a great supplement to a ketogenic diet. It will, you can't outfast the standard American diet long term. 
The hunger will continue to increase. You're not well fat adapted, so every time you do go into ketosis through a fast, you're, you're going to not efficiently remain there. Um, your brain is still looking for your sugar to go up, and while you're refueling your glycogen, you're still going to be overeating because you're going to be taking in all of them extra carbs to to because you're not going to have your hunger and satiation kick in. You're going to keep stuff in your face, and you're not going to stop eating, you know, unless you're physically 100% filled your stomach, and then you'll be hungry again in a couple hours. And if you're maintaining a disciplined eating window, that's okay, but you are you might not ramp your metabolism back up if you're not doing it ketogenically. If you're doing it with a standard American diet, you'll I'm telling you, you'll fly down this path of, of hunger and binge eating and you'll you'll be hangry a lot. You'll it, it just it became a huge problem for me. Like fasts were really a struggle. And then when you throw into it the whole fructose becomes fat thing, you're not really repairing your health. Um, you still will notice health improvements over a standard American diet without fasting, but you're still going to have some of these issues, blood sugar problems definitely if you're uh, diabetic autoimmune illness, depression, anxiety. Um, these are all things that I had as a standard American faster. So recall, I'm getting my daily calories every single day, not necessarily within a 24 hour period. So you can watch that all the way, but I think we get the gist that I was wrong about a lot of things. I was wrong about calories in calories out. I was wrong about, you know, counting calories during, you know, fasting and then counting calories on top of that is a formula to, for starvation. And I straight up, my metabolism dropped. I did plateau. You wouldn't eventually. be with me now, would you? And it, it became unsustainable uh, to the point where I had to do something about the hunger. And that's where I came to kick the ketogenic diet and I've been keto ever since I failed at it a bunch of times I fell off the wagon a bunch of times I got right back in and did it again and again and again until finally I'm fully ketogenic with very occasional cheat days and by cheat days I mean cheat item in a meal not a whole like fucking meal that's a cheat and uh, I haven't looked back in terms of Wanting to go back to just fasting and eating the standard American diet. I've learned too much about the poisonous food system that we have. And I really do enjoy the foods I eat on keto versus the fake foods that the standard American diet offers me. And I recommend just... If you're just starting out and you somehow stumble on this video because you wanted to eat some fucking fucked up shit and lose weight... Yeah, that'll work short term, long term. Worry about your health, fix your health, and you will lose weight effortless, effortlessly at that point. Because it doesn't require a lot of effort to fast and be keto. And you, you'll be happier, I think, long term. That's my thoughts. But what the fuck do I know? Because I'm not a fucking expert, as you can tell. I wasn't an expert then, and I'm still not an expert now. I might be wrong and I'll figure it out another couple of years from now. That's why you should do your homework. Because I'm just an asshole. I don't know everything. Do your homework. Do your own research. Do your own self-experiments. Something that works for you might not have worked for me or vice versa. But at least you're doing what you need to do to improve your health. And it's probably still light years ahead of everyone around you. So... That's my thoughts there. Please like and subscribe for more shit. And I'll make more shit. Also, if you found this video enlightening, for those of you on YouTube, and you want to help support me making all these videos, head to scottthetruckdriver.com, leave a tip in the virtual tip jar for every $20 I receive. No matter how many people add it up to the $20, I will do one video up to five videos per week. Um, and... I think we're up to one video so far for next week, so we're good. But you're getting five long-ass videos this week, so it's all good. 
You have plenty of content. There's no shortage. Don't be afraid to give me a week off. I'm, I'm good. Um, head to scottthetruckdriver.com. Subscribe to the email list, and you will stay informed periodically of all the new things I do, along with links that I mail out so that you can just click the links and go straight to whatever without having to search all over for my shit. Uh, a lot of you have, have come over there, and I appreciate that you guys are taking the time. Also, in the subscriber lounge, I will be uploading. I just encoded the almost eight-hour uh, We Are All Slaves stream, so that's going in. Um, and the video version of it is also going to be in the subscriber lounge. It's going to probably take all night to upload that, but once it's in there, you can stream it right off of the, the Google Drive links that are in the subscriber lounge. So enjoy that. For those of you here on DLive, this isn't the end. I have two more videos to film, two more reactions to do, but I am going to take a 10-minute break before I kick off the next fucking video series, so, because I want to go get some coffee and, and pee. I gotta pee. Just thought I'd share that with you. Have a nice motherfucking day. And shit. And no. Don't eat junk and intermittent fasts and expect to be healthy. It's just not going to happen.